So uh, one approach that you can take if you want to control something that's mains powered is you can get these uh, PowerPoint sockets which uh, are remote controlled with an RF remote. And so I, I gave a demo where you could actually uh, vote during a presentation as to whether you wanted Christmas tree lights on or a fan light on or, or a lamp on. And uh, it would just send the signal over the uh, RF remote and turn those particular dev devices on and off. Uh, and that didn't require any interaction with mains power at all. Another potential avenue, there's a project to combine the Arduino, um, the Arduino project with uh, Android cell phones, so to be able to control your Android, uh, to control your Arduino-based hardware project from an Android cell phone, uh, there's a toolkit available. Um, and sort of forward thinking, there's, uh, who here has heard the term road apple, not in the context of horseshit? <laughs> so a road apple is a social engineering attack where you drop USB keys or another piece of hardware in the parking lot of the company that you're targeting. Um, and as people tend to do, people are going to plug that thing into their computers when they get into the office. So yeah, exactly. The what's on this effect. And uh, it's, you know, it, it can be as simple as including um, Bright shiny things. Exe on that road apple. Um, the the where you run into issues is a lot of uh, corporations will have um, USB device IDs whitelisted and only allow those whitelisted device IDs. Fortunately, you can guess what those whitelisted device IDs are going to be just based on like you know what you know people to be deploying in their corporate networks. Um, and with the functionality of the Arduino USB stack to be able to uh, spoof device IDs, you can potentially pretend to be one of those and present yourself as a mass storage device. Um, another one that I've been thinking a lot about lately is haptic, uh, haptic inputs and outputs, um, building covert input devices uh, if you're potentially going into an area where you're not allowed to take notes or, take, or record video or whatever, uh, you could potentially use um, soft switches, soft circuits um, to build a haptic interface that, you know, when you nod your head records something or when you, like, tap a spot on your sleeve records, uh, records text based on Morse code, something like that. Um, and thinking about uh, that sort of physical way of bypassing things uh, brings me to a brief interlude. Um, some of you may have seen the t-shirts folks are wearing uh, that say Free Byron on them, the stickers and the buttons. Um, check out freebyron.org. Byron is a friend of mine and fellow Hackerspace member uh, who is currently being detained in Canada for criticizing the security apparatus and security spending around the G20. So um, if you're interested at all in the right to dissent and the right to criticize crappy security infrastructure, you should check out freebyron.org. Back to USB fuzzing. Uh, a little, I'm going to do a little bit of a summary about the current research and uh, then hand it back over to follower. So um, in terms of USB sniffing and rever protocol reversing, um, there's the sort of old and busted USB snoop, which is still workable up to Windows XP, but doesn't work on Vista or 7. Um, it, it is useful, but produces kind of crappy output. Um, Pi USB uh, is useful that, for that as well. And Nick and Furkin gave a talk on Thursday uh, called GoGo -Go Gadget Python, where they did a bunch of pro um, protocol analysis on the USB Snoop output uh, using Python. So that's definitely worth checking out. There's also a variety of expensive and expensive commercial USB sniffers and protocol analyzers out there, but that's not that interesting. We're talking like a couple thousand dollars kind of expensive. So. Um, some other folks that are working on this stuff, Rafael Dominguez Vega gave a talk last year at DEF CON. Um, he built a PIC based USB fuzzing device. Uh, Moritz Jodate get, um, has a really interesting presentation covering a bunch of security aspects of USB um, at a protocol level uh, and has done a bunch of software based fuzzing that's pretty interesting. So back to. Last time we switch, I promise. We're in Vegas, so I guess you should, oh wow, there you go, that would have been a good bet. So one thing to keep in mind uh, is uh, I was introduced to the Arduino about three years ago uh, and up until that stage I'd had an interest in electronics but never sort of got into it too much. Um, there always seemed to be a whole lot of stuff that you had to remember and it was like, electricity is like water except when it's not and it kind of goes through a pump and I'm like, what? Uh, 
but the great thing with the Arduino is it takes uh, what used to be a 100% hardware problem and makes it a 90% software problem and then a 10% hardware problem. And that means that if you're familiar with software then you can kind of get a long way uh, with just writing code and then you can look at uh, things like uh, the little pieces of hardware that you actually need to, to, to learn and pick up that knowledge as you go. The other, just the other big step up with the Arduino from previous microcontroller and hardware hacking platforms. Um, the sheer amount of yak shaving that is involved in setting up a lot of other microcontroller platforms is a real barrier to entry for a lot of folks. With the Arduino, you download a zip file, install the driver, or it's even already installed on, Windows, on, on Linux, and uh, you, you're ready to go. Um, it's also a completely free stack, whereas a lot of the other microcontroller environments out there require proprietary and potentially even non gratis Cost software. free scale. Yeah, mm. <laughs> exactly. So potentially not non-free as in Libra, as well as non-free as in no cost. So yeah. Uh, so then there's uh, another selection uh, section of things which you can do just because you can. Uh, this is a uh, example of, of one of those things. So uh, you can you can serve up pretty much anything you like uh, when you're doing a uh, when when you're using a, a wireless uh, or, or wired shield. And uh, so I played for a while with using Python to generate a, a flash file and then serve that flash file up uh, from, from the, the chip. Now the restriction in that case was this was before there was uh, good implementations of micro SD support. And so essentially everything you were serving up had to be served up from your, in those days, uh, 16K of RAM. And uh, so it turned out that Flash was kind of a, a more efficient way of getting some kind of cool stuff doing. So uh, this is a uh, demo of a demo uh, which has a, uh, a Flash file which is served up and then uh, the little grey uh, lines which you hopefully can see uh, are basically uh, have the ability to return uh, the values of analog pins on, uh, on the Arduino. And so the idea with this is that you don't actually have to install any software to play with it. You can just plug it into your machine, um, go to the local link IP address and it will pop this up and you can automatically start uh, doing stuff with it. And in the background it uses a uh, HTTP REST implementation which basically gives you a URL for each uh, digital pin that you want to turn on and off. Uh, so which then means you can also use things like JavaScript and stuff like that. So um, there's a, a couple of other uh, variations of this that, that people have done out there um, which gives you kind of the ability to do stuff. Uh, so we have uh, one last demo uh, which is VNC. Now one of the restrictions is that if you've only got 2K of RAM um, you can't have a particularly large display space. Um, at least that used to be the case. If we uh, bring this all together. So uh, here I've got um, a VNC client. And uh, it turns out that the VNC server implementation is actually relatively straightforward. Um, although I suppose I should really say, man, VNC implementation is really, really difficult and it took a really long time to get this to work. Um, yeah, the protocol uh, is quite well documented and uh, will, um, and, and is something that you can kind of generate on the fly. So we plug it in. Uh, this is uh, how a shield and an Arduino fit together. And connect. So one of the things that uh, you can keep in mind with uh, this, and we, there we have it. So we have our 255 pixel by 255 pixel screen which our Arduino is serving up, um, complete with a windowed environment. Uh, and it's currently giving you a, a reading of the analog pins. Um, so those red bars and the numbers represent uh, the current state of the uh, analog pins. Uh, and because they're what's known as a floating input, it will uh, change as, as the screen advances. And uh, yeah, so this is an example of uh, if you're needing to get feedback from a device um, that you've installed in a location, uh, you've got options out there for things like VNC or uh, using a web browser to, uh, to retrieve that information. Uh, and again, uh, there's a lot of 
cool stuff that's that's still yet to be done. People are, are finding out what can be done, and you know, people say, you know, a few years ago, it was like, oh, you can't connect a camera to an Arduino, and then this camera came out that you could do stuff with. Um, then it was like, oh, you can't attach USB uh, devices like uh, you know keyboards or cameras uh, to to a USB uh, to an Arduino because it do, it can't act as a USB host. And then a USB host chip was released, and someone who created USB host shield, and they're currently working on getting that to do uh, P2P communication with uh, cameras so you can take photographs and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, if it's a field where you like to do things for the first time, there's there's heaps of space there. Um, there's, there's heaps of uh, opportunity for doing cool hacks. Um, if that's what motivates you, I'm sure it doesn't. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was in case the VNC demo didn't work. Uh, so uh, that pretty much uh, covers uh, uh, the main stuff that we wanted to, to talk about. We've got a few minutes if uh, we want to get any uh, questions or um, you can talk to us in the Q&A room later. Did you have anything else there? No? Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Cool, thanks for your time and we can see you in the Q&A room. Oh, we've got, we've got uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, with your war driving group, uh, can you talk to the relative power consumption between using that and the laptop? Um, well, the, uh, when I was, uh, so the question is, uh, what's the power consumption of, of the war driving uh, rig? Um, so this was running off four uh, uh, AA batteries um, and that does quite, quite happily for quite a long time. Um, and so yeah, now the other thing is that you can also reduce the size of this quite a bit. These are just using the standard shields. Um, if you wanted to create a custom PCB, um, then you could reduce the size of it probably to, to, to maybe, you know, kind of half, half yeah, also. Cool. Okay, thanks a lot for your time.